when we first got there, we were green, and they they had a uh, a turnover in the uh, in the high echelons, and we got a new uh, commanding officer by the name of Cocky, C O C K E Y. I don't remember his first name, but we didn't hardly even get to know him because his first uh, uh, his first actions were to shape up the new crews, and so they had a practice mission where we assimilated a regular bombing mission, and the bombing mission was on, on King's Land, uh, which is a, a, a town on the edge of, uh, uh, it was northeast, uh, northwest of, uh, of, of where we were, but it was a pretty good sized town. But during the mission, uh, I, there was a lead crew, and then the right, that was number one, and flying on his right wing was number two, which was our plane, piloted by Harold Anderson and me, Jim Russell. And uh, unbeknownst to me, there was well, there was a there was a supervisor or, or, or a veteran that already had some experience standing in between the two seats behind us. And it turns out that that was Dick Baines. I didn't know it at the time until I read his book. Uh, he, re he edited a book called The uh, Replacement Crew, and I still have it. And uh, Anyway, the number one plane had the squadron commander, and it was named Cocky, and the number two plane was our plane, uh, Anderson plane, and number three plane was, uh, was Bell. And all, all three planes were in the 780, Seventh Squadron. As a matter of fact, I think uh, all of them behind us were. But we, when we got through the bombing run, they they made a turn off the bombing run and headed towards uh, back to the base. And there was a place where they made a turn, a sharp turn, and there was a plane. There was a squadron right ahead of us that turned a little sharper than we did. And whenever we turned. That's where the hands come in. Yeah. When we turned, uh, we turned directly behind them and we got into extreme turbulence. And uh, my, my plane, our plane, Anderson plane, being on the outside, on the right side, we're turning to the left, and the, the Anderson plane was on the number two position, and so we were the first ones to feel the, the turbulence. And we hit that turbulence, and the wind just dropped down like that because the turbulence kept you from having lift. And when the wind dropped down, well, it caused the plane to veer to the right very abruptly. Uh, the lead plane, just a, a second or two afterwards, he had the same effect. He veered to the right. And the third plane, which is number three on his left, uh, just two seconds or three seconds later, got the same thing. And all three of us went to the right. Had all of us had the same type of control, it had been just like this, it had been like a ballet. But uh, I'll get to that a little bit later, but the number, th number three plane uh, came over behind the, the, the number one plane and then came up under him. And when he came up under him, he, uh, he uh, dismantled it. He, he knocked the tail off of the, off of one, or anyway, the, I forget which one of them went which way, but anyway, the tail came off of one of them and caused him to flip. They actually flipped in the air. Wow. And uh, then they, it was a matter of trying to get out. That plane, there were three, uh, there's one person got out of one plane and three uh, three got out of the other plane, I believe. I think there were four of them got out. But uh, they were, in addition to having nine men or ten men, which is usual, uh, they had uh, some extra people on there to see what was going on. And it also, they had some other pilots that went down with it and some other navigators. Uh, but they, the, there's this written up in the, in the, in the, uh, it's written up in the uh, Adelbridge notes 
that uh, Bell told pretty much what it was, uh, how, how it happened and so forth. But I have a, I, I have thought it over over uh, six to five years or seventy years, and I found out I, I, I've come to the conclusion that the lead plane had a was was using autopilot, and the lead plane using that autopilot autopilot is much quicker and stronger than a, than a person handling it manually, and I and my con conclusion is that I. I was actually flying the plane on the number two position, and as the wing dropped, I allowed it to drop to get away, and it got away from the rest of them, and I was out there 50 or 60 or 75 feet to one side in the clear. Whenever the, the lead plane, when his wing dropped, the autopilot straightened it back up right quick, and he, he straightened up quicker, and the other plane, didn't have the autopilot on. Well, naturally, you can't fly formation with the autopilot because <laughs> you have to do it. Anyway, uh, the, the second plane could not react quick enough and they ran together. And it was a, uh, it wasn't uh, the second plane, it wasn't, the, the, it wasn't Bell's fault. It was, he could, I say it wasn't his fault. It's possible if he'd been real sharp, he could, he could, gone down, you know, and got out of the way. But uh, he explained it that he wasn't flying, and he was, the co-pilot was doing the flying because he was nearest it. Uh, but the, my contention is that the, it, was a, it was automatic pilot's fault, or uh, the person who, it was a condition that, 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 that happened that it was conducive to uh, an impossible situation. So and it, it, what the cave was a co-pilot? Excuse me, cave. Uh, 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 Bell's co-pilot was named Cave, C-A-V-E, -E. and he he couldn't uh, he wasn't quick enough to to, to bring it around uh, to straighten them and get out of the way. And Bell together, um, so Bell said they, that together um, couldn't do it, and they went they went ahead and ran together. And they were, I think there were 19, 19 or twenty people. I tried to two or three people on there, but I think there was uh, four of them. Uh, there was a fellow named Corsha who was an engineer. He got out, and whenever he came down to the ground, he, he was a he was in uh, he was in Bell's he was in Bell's uh, plane, and he was an engineer. And when he saw what was happening, he opened he there was a handle like a bicycle handlebar. Uh, and he hit that handle, which is open to Bombay's, where he can get out. And he hit it so hard until he broke it off. Well, of course, it opened up the. And when he landed down on the, on the ground, he still had that. He still had the uh, uh, handle off the, off the, uh, the, the Bombay control in his hand. Wow. And uh, you can read about what the rest of them did. Uh, uh, Stuart, Stuart Pierce. Uh, he came down and put his parachute on on the way down because he was in the plane was doing back and like this and he got out. But he uh, he, he wrote about it and uh, anyway that was uh, my experience with that. Wow. And uh, it just so happens uh, on this particular mission, it was a practice mission that was set up by the colonel to improve uh, uh, formation flying, and what he what he had, he had only air only uh, pilots in the airplanes. Didn't have any gunners or anything because it was all over England, and we lost a lot of pilots that night. Now that afternoon, uh, now uh, I was behind uh, the gentleman that uh, just spoke to you. I was flying as, uh, as a navigator in that particular mission, and uh, I saw that as we, we were flying along, this airplane on the right was turning this way, and the one on the left wasn't moving at all. It was just moving forward. It wasn't turning at all. And I figured they're going to, uh, these tails are going to catch. And uh, it, I didn't have time to call my pilot. The only way I could get information is to get my pilot on the radio, and then he would have to radio to the other pilot. It just wouldn't work. 
and uh, the next thing I knew, the empanizers were flying off, you know, on both airplanes. Now, as Sue Peace told me, he was he was stuck in the airplane by uh, uh, centripetal force, you know. But what happened was the tail blew off, and when the tail blew off, he came out with the tail. So that's how that's how he was saved, you know. He he he, he that's how he uh, parachuted, and uh, it it was a. Uh, there was nothing you could do about it, you know. It, it just went that fast, and then I, I gave the formation the uh, heading back to the base, and we went back to the base. And I was right behind them, and as I saw these airplanes coming together, I figured something's wrong here. They shouldn't be doing that because one guy's making a right turn, and the other fellow's going straight. So that's why the tails caught. That's how the tails caught, and you know they just snapped off like toys. And, uh, what position plane were you in? They said there was a lead plane. Uh, yeah, well, no, I, I was I was behind. I guess I was behind. I was in the slaughter wherever it was. I just don't remember where, but I was behind uh, the airplanes that were involved. Yeah. Right behind them. Yeah. I didn't see Stuart come out of the airplane, you know, but uh, when I found out later, he, uh, you know, I was very friendly with Stuart. And, uh, you know, it, it was a terrible thing, and there was a very, a very young, capable major, very young, uh, he, major. I don't know. There, there was another, was that cocky? The new right, right, and uh, he, he he was killed in that. I think, yeah. 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 Oh, and uh, we had the critique at night and all, and. Uh, I still don't know why one was going this way and one was going that way. I mean, somebody was supposed to be following somebody, and uh, what Jim said is he thought it was the prop wash from the, the group ahead. I don't, I don't, I know. I thought maybe prop wash, but I don't think so. If it was prop wash, there'd be uh, turbulence. You know what I mean? There was no turbulence. It was a smooth ride. They just the tails came together because one guy turned this way, the other fellow didn't, and the tails snapped off. The tails both snapped off, you know. Now, once you got back to the base, did they give you any counseling after you'd seen that? No, I, I gave a report on it, naturally, you know, and, they, and uh, that's the last I heard of it, you know. But I've been friendly with the Stuart, Stuart Peace uh, over the years, you know, and uh, his daughter just called us a couple of weeks ago to tell us that he had passed away. And... Uh, it, it was just, it was just uh, I couldn't figure it. You know, you know what I mean? Either somebody wasn't following the orders or, uh, I, don't, I don't know, somebody misunderstood orders. I, I just don't know why it went that way, you know? Because, you know, if, if, if the lead plane is turning this way, all the other planes should turn the same way. Yeah. Maybe the lead plane wasn't supposed to turn that way. That I don't know. But uh, it was a, uh, uh, you know, something I still, I still see, you know. <laughs>